Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 20 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we're going to be reviewing Concavenator from the early Cretaceous of España or Spain. As always, George, what is the fossil record we have? Very good. So this dinosaur was found in a block mostly articulated and complete. So articulated means all the fossils were interconnected the way they would have been when the dinosaur was alive. The only parts we're missing are parts of the leg and some sections of the tail. Okay, George, we have four different models to review today. Where would you like to get started? Let's start smallest with the PNSO. The PNSO Mini. So one of the main features of Concavenator is going to be this tall spine right above its hip. We are not sure what it exactly used these for, but we know one thing for sure. It probably would have been very good for display. So that's typically what paleontologists say. If we don't know what something's used for, that's very obvious on a dinosaur. We say it's for display. It's to show off. And show off, this one does. I mean, look at those colors. I really like this kind of tiger patterning. This guy was twice the size of a tiger. Small compared to other Carcharodon swords, but still pretty big. Now, it does have that classic Carcharodon source skull, but a little bit more petite. Now you're going to notice feathers on the arms and all around the body. So there were quill knobs found on the ulna of this dinosaur. So th the side part of this arm would have had feather attachment. That's what quill knobs are. So that's pretty accurate there. The feet look good. Your basic theropod posture. I do like the little frill of the feathers they have at the end. No cloaca on this mini, but that's okay. It comes with a base. Look at that. We've got little rocks and you know what they did with this base, they didn't settle for one color. You got grays, you got a little bit of greens, some yellows. I'm, I'm impressed. You mentioned the quills. Would it have had actual feathers? So that is the, that is a thing. You can have quills, but not necessarily have feathers. The feathers are sort of a an assumption based on the quill knobs. That's basically like looking at someone's skin and seeing hair follicles. Well, if they're, the follicles are there, does that mean they have hair or no hair? There's no way to know for sure. And it's kind of the same thing with, with fossils. But So it could have gone either way, but feathers seem to be what we find more in theropods. You know, dinosaurs that walk on two legs, they're more related to the birds than other non-avian dinosaurs are. So I would say this is a fair assumption to make. Let's look at the Collect A model. Okay, look at this. This one also comes with a base. Look at that. Oh, and this one has footprints. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's start with the skull. So we'll go from head to tail. The skull is very classic Harkadon Sorid, just like I mentioned with the previous model. But this one has its mouth open. You see the ear hole. You've got the kind of sunken in face of the anteorbital fenestra, the, the ocular as well there. You've got the hands facing inwards. That's always good. You want your pronated hands. And look at that. They even added little feathers underneath. I almost missed those. They're so tiny. They took a more conservative approach to it. But, you know, the evidence is there for it. Moving on to the back, we see the hump, as they call it, right over the hip. Now, it's not really weird to see this in dinosaurs. It just looks weird on this one because it's just isolated in one area. But its relative, Acrocanthosaurus, was also a Carcharodontosaur with kind of a hump over its back. Except its hump goes from its the base of its tail all the way up to its neck. So it has kind of like this ridge, whereas Concavenator only has this bump. So that's that's a neat little feature this dinosaur has. And oh, yay, they added a cloaca. Look at that little guy. I love how the tail's held up above the ground. And I love that they made this a different color as well. This is a pretty decent, very basic Concavenator. I think they did good with this. A couple questions, George. This tail does not have the little poofiness at the tip. It does not. You are absolutely right about that. I would say that doesn't really detract from it because we didn't find evidence of feathers at the tip of the tail. We only found evidence of feathers on the arms. So that's something that if the evidence is not there, why add it? So when the previous model, it was more of an artistic liberty as well as an, ass an assumption. I, I would say an educated guess. And this one, they only went with what evidence was there. So it's hard to take points off for that. The hump was that made of actual bone or was that? It's made out of keratin. So they're keratin sheaths. You know, it's pretty tough. I'd say it's as tough as nails. I almost said bone or keratin, but I didn't want to make, I didn't want to look like a fool if I was wrong. And I would have been right for once. <laughs> Saying those two words fast right after another is also pretty funny. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> I'm not even going to try it. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Which one would you like to look at next, George? Let's look at the Safari Limited. Okay, so there's already a change, a big change here. There's no base. So these are going to be the start of the freestanding on Cabinators. Sounds like a political affiliation. <laughs> or a band name. That'd oh, yeah. That'd be great. The freestanding Cabinators. Freestanding Cabinators. All right. Uh, I, they'd probably be a rock band because yeah, exactly. they're, they're fossils. Um, so this concavenator looks very serious. I don't think he liked any of our jokes, <laughs> but this is good. I like a good dinosaur with a closed mouth. Looking at its claws, I do like how it's splayed out so you can really see the whole extent of the hand. Now, Caracodontosaurids did have small arms, but relative to Tyrannosaurus, they were pretty long. And they could have very well gripped their prey. The feet are really well sculpted here. You can even see the curvature of the claws come out separate from the foot. Uh, very well sculpted musculature. We've got the, the spine moved a little bit forward here. That's something that is kind of contested in the pose of this dinosaur. Um, where exactly or how far or how much does this spine extend? Because we're missing bone from here, this part of the fossil. Uh, speaking of that, of that part of the tail, we have a cloaca. That's a... Very well placed painted cloaca. And this one has red eyes. I just noticed that. You stay up too late, buddy. Oh, and it has red crests. So that's pretty neat. So these uh, Caracodontosaurids had smoother crests than other carnivorous dinosaurs. So it's nice to see them highlighted. Just because they're smooth doesn't mean they wouldn't have had any ornamentation or coloration. The counter shading is also a nice transition from this kind of like burnt brown to this tan color. I really like this one. And I'm not just saying that because I already have it. Question, George. Mm -hmm. This is the largest model we've looked at so far, but with the smallest hump. Is the proportion of the hump correct? You know, I'm glad you brought that up. I would say it's a little bit bigger in real life. So the hump would have been probably a little bit bigger. I think they, they went a little conservative here, which is never a bad thing. But if it's the main feature of a dinosaur, I can see it taking off points. Another thing, this guy does not have any of the feathers on the arm. In fact, no feathers anywhere on the body. So this is our more reptilian depiction of concavenator, kind of like a lizard with a, a hump. Um, one of the theories is they could use it for temperature regulation. Okay, George, let's take a look at the final figure, which is from Papo, which just arrived new in the warehouse this week. Oh, look how cool this one looks. Wow, compared to the other colors. Oh, and the mouth opens. You know, I, I did that out of habit. I didn't really think that I was... I was gonna get anywhere with this, but that is really neat. Sorry, I'm just admiring it. Okay, so let's start from the head. You can see the, oh, look at the scales on that lower jaw. You know, this is giving me like green iguana vibes. You know, as green iguanas get older, they turn from green to orange. So this is probably like a more mature adult. Uh, you see these on the, on the top of the head, these are like crested quill feathers, so. And they even have them going down the throat. Um, we do have the feathers on the side of the arm there. You can see them a bit better on the other side, actually. See, they're sticking out. And it's hard to tell if they're feathers or just quills, but I think they went the quill route. Yeah, because you, you don't really see the phrase, the phrase of the feathers, which we saw in the other figures. We've got some skew action going on back here. These osteoderm scutes leading up to the two humps. The ridges do start trending upwards, but we're missing a chunk here and here in the fossil record. So I'm, I'm sure they kind of made an inference that it was kind of like a camel's hump, that it's you got two humps going on there. This looks freaky. On, on the belly, it's like its rib cage is showing. It's like its, its skin is peeling back, kind of like a xenomorph just showing us its exoskeleton. All right. And I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> is this are these two cloacas? I mean, this one's in the right place, but this one's not. That one looks like that's like the pelvic bottom, the pelvic boot. That's so weird. I'm so confused by this figure. Uh, there's these. Are they nipples? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we found more nipples. Pelvic nipples. <laughs> Oh, I what about these? I think we found the title for this episode. No. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, uh, there goes my career as a paleontologist. <laughs> I worry about that sometimes. <laughs> these osteoderms are insane. They look like stones are lodged into this poor creature. And then you have these bigger scale osteoderms over the smaller scales, which is a pretty neat detail, but I don't 
Now, if we found those in the fossil record. And then we have like a paintbrush like tail, which I do like the coloration of this figure, but it had so many features that were confusing to me. I do like the feet though. They're very much like bird feet. You know, uh, bird feet kind of start this scale pattern from the knee down, but everything else is kind of freaky, man. I have very mixed feelings about this dinosaur. Oh my goodness. I can tell by sitting next to him that he is actually quite puzzled on this figure. I am. I mean, it looks great from afar. It looks, honestly, it, it's the coolest one out of all of these. But from a scientific standpoint, it baffles me. Is it another example of Papel kind of making a monster of their fossils, of their dinosaur models? I would say so. But, you know, monsters sell. I will have to say that. You know, the weirder or cooler or gruesome the dinosaur looks... Uh, if, if you go back to like the brontosaurus episode i really like the dead one and it's because it's just it's so weird you know we're used to all of these these dinosaurs kind of looking like dinosaurs that when they're shown to be more bird-like or they're shown to be more monster-like we're like is that really what we're looking at and everybody has their own personal bias about that but this guy whew, really throws it out of the water Okay, George, mugshot time. Let's take a look at the faces side by side. What's jumping out at you? They all have the right proportions for the skull. Collect A. That has a mouth open. Its skull is a bit thinner in proportion than, than the others, but it could just be a younger one or a more gray style one. But I would say my least favorite is that one. And my most favorite, I would say, is in skull shape would probably have to be the safari because of its proportions and its proportions and shape are the most accurate from what i see as well as you know showing that good side profile top view and front view now that i'm looking at all of them side by side i can clearly see that that is the best skull that i've seen let's take a look at the hands then george three of them had feathers so would those be the most accurate yes so because we found cool knobs or feather attachments on the fossil I would say the ones with feathers are the more accurate ones. So then that would mean that my previous choice of the skull is no longer a contender for that accuracy aspect of the feathers. So Okay, George, let's take a look at the humps. Are they called humps? Yeah. Not sails? Uh, you know, they're used interchangeably for this dinosaur, but I think humps would be a good title, like my humps. Okay. My humps, my, my humps, humps, my humps. <laughs> I can't believe I knew that song. <laughs> um, okay, George, let's take a look at the humps side by side. Which one's the most accurate? It's between the Popo and the Piano So. They're in the right positioning, but the the Piano So one kind of bridges the two bumps or humps. Papa one kind of isolates them, does more of that separation. Uh, I would say they're the top two in that aspect, but... I would say for the sake of posture that the PNSO one wins. Question. Only the Papo model has two definitive humps. Mm -hmm. Do they all have two humps that are just blended together? The Safari one shows this better than I could probably explain it. So the tail is normal, but then there's a divot, and then there's a hump. This makes the back end of the tail look like a hump. Okay. Does that does that make yes. sense? So what the PNSO one did is it connected this this ridge to the top of that hump, making it one singular hump. Okay. So that's what some of these figures are doing. But the Papa one shows them as separate, just like the Safari one does. So it's not necessarily that they're two humps, but the ridges of the tail are elevated and then dip down. Okay. And then there's a hump. I say two humps because that's what it looks like on video. But I can see how that's mis misleading, so... They could have been connected. Like I said, we're missing parts from that tail, so we don't really know exactly whether they connected or not. Okay, George, decision time. Assuming money is no object, which figure are you going to get? Probably the Popo one. There's something weird about it that I, I, I don't know. I kind of like it. <laughs> so even though it's probably the least scientifically accurate? Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say it was the least scientifically accurate. I just... Okay, so... It's it's scientifically accurate with extra stuff. It's like you did good and then you added more. <laughs> okay. So it's that's my sentiment with the Papa one. So I guess by that default it would make it less less accurate. The Papa one is significantly more expensive than the other ones. 
is there any of the other figures you would avoid? I would probably avoid the Collect A one. The addition of a base is not a deal breaker for me per se. I guess the deal breaker would be the amount of attention added to the base. I do like the base from the PNSO one because of its paint and the texture of it, but the Collect A one looks very plain, even though it does have footprints on it. It just looks like it's standing on cookie dough. It is a rather plain base. That coupled with its coloration, the other figures, there's patterning, there's changes in color, there's ornamentation. I just feel the Collect A kind of is lackluster in comparison to the other two. Now that I have, or the other three, I mean, now that I have them all side by side, it really does look very dull. So I would say that one would not be my choice at all. All right. So George has decided that he would go with the new Papo model as his favorite and scientifically accurate plus. Yes. If I had a budget option, then I would go with the PNSO one. Thank you for watching. If you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up and a like, and we will see you on the next episode. I think the the Collect A one shows it better. There's a divot. Safari. Oh, this is Safari? Yes. Yes, this is Safari. Is this? Yeah, you've been right. Okay, okay. okay. So the Collect A1 shows this better. Safari. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, this one's Collect A. Oh, that's Collect A and this is Safari. Yeah. Oh. But you have been saying them right. Okay, okay. You have been.